So, earlier this month, I was able to make it out to Anime Expo in Los Angeles, and among the mess of things I did up there, the North American premiere of Sankarol Connect was one of them. During my early days of watching anime, Senkoro was a title you were just better off watching, even if it didn't seem personally appealing. The reasons to justify that declaration were plenty. Whether it be its fluid animation, intriguing self-contained story about shape-shifting aliens, or the minimal yet distinctive character designs among others. The reason I'm talking about it today is because of the fact that this sequel was 10 years in the making, and it was one that rested primarily on the shoulders of one person as well. When I learned that this project was from the mind of illustrator and character designer Atsuyuki, Senkuro went from being merely a quaint 30 minute OVA to a truly intriguing work to understand in terms of its production history. So the progenitor of the story would be all the way back in 2005 under the title of A Manga Game, a manga one-shot published in the magazine Afternoon. It ended up winning first in the publication's Four Season Award, which should start painting the picture of this guy's talent and perseverance seeing how he's had about 14 years with this material. The overall skeleton for this film is that this guy, named Amamiya Tetsu, controls this weird stubby alien called Senko that's able to shapeshift into everyday items like cars or the less mundane jet plane. It doesn't take much imagination to see how this attracts the attention of others, like the curious high school girl Yuki and the enigmatic pompous Shu, who is our antagonist. Cue the sequences of Sakuga eye candy. Now the reason I called it a skeleton is that the film itself doesn't go that far into explaining our character's condition prior to the stories, and relies on visuals to push its narrative forward. Combine that with their offbeat interactions, while I liked, but understand not everyone can, will probably leave the impression that it's a marvelous half-hour spectacle that you'll only think back to once, three years later. That's why I was pleasantly surprised by the sequel's ability to pick up right where it left off and quickly start filling in the blanks left by the predecessor. So before I say anything else, let it be known that there's only preview footage for the film for reasons I hope are obvious, and that I will go into slight spoilers, so I'll put a timestamp for those who want to keep the sequel fresh. Now onto the film. It starts off by introducing two new characters whose names are escaping my head right now, frustratingly enough. They both work for an organization that covertly captures and studies the creatures like the ones in the first film. It turns out Shu was also a member of this group, until he went AWOL and stole the two creatures that we saw in the process. Now there's a kill capture order on his head. As for Tetsu and Yuki, she still has control over Senko, even though it's acting as Tetsu's right arm, leading to a weird limb lease relationship between the two. Even though he's been trying to regain control, Yuki's unwillingness, or more precisely, inability to give it, puts him in a bind. As you can see, each party more or less has something to gain so the film moves into shifting alliances, complete with deception and bargaining. Don't worry though, the action most definitely comes back in full force. The amount of quality in the movement, as well as composition, makes it clear that Uki has used these 10 years well. And this care even goes into the character acting. The background art is gorgeous as ever, whether it's as Ruin City, Tropical Beach, or Rural Schoolhouse. What I really appreciate though, is the expansion of the world which helped connect the set pieces as places the characters lived in, as opposed to just locations. With the additional bits of context, it creates a fast hook into a story that's able to grow into all the threads established previously, tying the display and story together. Now, this is just my stupid ramblings, but this might be the closest thing to Dead Dead Demon's Dead 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 Destruction will get animated, which is another splendid work about alien invaders descending on Japan. For those who have read the manga, the comparison might seem off until you get to a certain shot, which will hopefully clear it up. The soundtrack is also great in complementing and accentuating the mood and energy of each scene, but especially the fights. Seeing how the original project was an animation reel with super hard electronics locked on it, I expected nothing less. Unfortunately, something came up, so I had to leave the screening early, missing my chance to listen to Supercell's new song for Sankarol Connect. It's okay, because I'll just put it on repeat once someone uploads a rip on YouTube. If it hasn't been clear yet, I really like this film, and I'm looking forward to seeing it again once screenings are announced stateside. If Senko Roll was even in your pretty cool list, then Senko Roll Connect will easily pass. Now with the news of a final movie in the works, where the series will go from here is anyone's guess. The thing I'm sure of 
is that how all of this, originally coming from one guy, will never stop impressing me.